Look at that. Welcome to Mac 1010. This was floated around the world and plugged into submarines to test them. Our mission is to turn this into a floating power station. I wonder if that would take my weight. I reckon that would take my weight. Oh, Come my it. microphone. I don't really fancy going full Tom Daly today. I mean, he might as well. He's showing most of what he's got anyway. Is it 50 quid for a cable gland? Uh, yeah, I think so. We're about to install this off-grid wind turbine onto this boat. Welcome aboard Mac 1010. This whole thing was basically a massive resistor that would get floated around the world, plugged into nuclear submarines in order to test them. But now it's the complete opposite. We've got this thing as a little floating power station. So if you follow the channel, you'll see that we've already put solar panels on the roof. Now, the solar panels are fantastic. But everyone knows they have their drawbacks, i.e. when the sun isn't shining, not very much is happening. But that's where we're hoping this wind turbine is gonna capture all of that wind that comes flying around off of the Isle of Wight to here and keep the batteries topped up. Let me show you down in the hull I'll show you what's going on down here. All right. So what we have in here is a Victron 15K inverter. We have three MPPT 250s, one 450, probably would have done it all right, but we cannot get them in Europe at the minute. So there's a massive wait for those. And then we have five 15 kilowatt hour batteries. So that is great. And most of the time that'll be absolutely fine. But because we've got that wind always blowing, it makes sense to try and use it. This is our charge controller. So this is what we'll be connecting on to the actual wind turbine itself. Obviously wind turbine generates power in three phase. We're gonna go more into this, but for now, take a seat, get a nice drink. If you're making a cup of tea, please let it brew for three minutes. Think about all the work that goes into getting that tea bag to your door. Someone's had to grow it. They've had to develop the best species of tea leaf, climb up a mountain, plant that tea leaf and get it down, process it, dry it in such a way that you can just dip that bag into some water. You're finished? and you'll get beautiful tea. Yet still, people manage to screw it up. They manage to flood it with milk and put it into tepid water. Three minutes or it's not worth drinking. Brew that, and in the meantime, we'll be getting all of this ready for you to watch. Is he done? Yes. The wind turbine will be going, oh, I wish that hatch was closed. I feel like the, the distance you have to fall now is so much more because of that hatch being open. The wind turbine is gonna be going here and it's gonna be going straight down the pole. So we've got a six meter length of steel That'll be overshooting the boat. At the minute, we've got this sort of temporarily lashed up because the internet's been down, so we've got the Tesla Starlink on the roof just to provide them some internet. Johnny has already welded this up for us. These guys from Lemon Energy, I think you know them well by now. Um, but the plan is to weld that onto the side of that beam that's sticking out up there. Then we've got these U-bolts, which will be going through around our pole and we'll bolt it in. Because the thing is, when you look at the forces involved in wind generation, I'm not sure exactly, but I think it's like 1.2 or 1.3 horsepower to every kilowatt of power that's generated. So imagine you've got a horse up there kicking the pole with that much leverage. It needs to be a really solid fixing, which is why we're opting to weld and make our own custom thing. All right, safety first. Ah, oh, now I can't see anything. At least I've got an excuse for my bad videography. What we need to do now is weld this top section here too, um, but he can't reach that, but I can when I'm standing up here, so I'll do that, but I'm not a very good welder. Don't you absolutely hate chasing payments? They drive me upside down. What? I hate chasing payments. You want to be on the tools. You're good at what you do, which is why you do it. You don't want to be an admin, you're a tradesman. Be a tradesman. Let software do all of that rubbish stuff that you don't want to do. I'm going to show you. This little box right here. Payment reminders, yes. Automated payment reminders. It means it will send your customer a reminder of your invoice so that you don't have to. And if you wanna check it out, the link to it is my description below and you're gonna get a sweet little discount with my code. You're gonna get it free for a period and then you're gonna have it discounted as well if you use my code below. Thank you to Tradeify for sponsoring this video. Not bad. I've seen worse on this boat. Just there. <laughs> right, so this is the pole here. It's quite heavy. <laughs> if I push you off the boat. This isn't straight. <laughs> There's trouble on this boat, nothing else is straight. That's the beauty of living on board a boat. You can feel it rocking. So you can't really go with plumb. You can't really go with level. You just have to go with what else is there. Right, so that goes around there then. So what we have to do now is take that paint off of this surface here so that we have something clean to weld onto. It looks straight from here, but I'm, I'm right underneath it. 
How's it from out there? I think the bottom, probably that way a touch. Bottom this way? I think that's pretty good. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Do you know what's a crazy thought? Each one of those gunships over there, you've got all the Portsmouth Harbour there and Gun Wharf. They could absolutely take you out from here. Like when you think of the Napoleonic era, Oh, yours, I wonder how many of them gunships it? it would take to take over the whole world back then. Have you got it? Yeah, I've got it. <laughs> I make it look effortless, but I've got it. I reckon one gunship you could take over the whole world. Go for it. Yeah. Yeah, drop. I, I've wondered if how many SEAL team units it would take to take out a whole Ro Roman legion with all of their weapons and everything. No, like a, a unit, like a SEAL team. Say you had SEAL team six. Who do you reckon would win in a fight out of one SEAL team with six Navy SEALs in it with modern day weapons or a whole legion of Roman soldiers? Bearing in mind the psychological aspect of it as well, you're, all of that is fairly considered, okay? Go, comment. So these are the blades here, so you can see they're quite big and this is only a 400 watt turbine, so it's one of the downsides of wind is how much surface area you actually need just to be able to make that spin to generate the power. I have been looking into making my own wind turbine. I started the process because I thought it'd be an interesting video and I was tearing down bits of a washing machine. All you need really is a DC motor. You could use a drone motor, you could use anything. And then at whatever voltage you want to output, you just need to make sure that motor is gonna take that input. But I went as far as making the charge controller. I've got all the components and a breadboard to solder it all up onto, but I've just not found the time to do it yet. Maybe it'll be a thing to do over the winter break. Are you sure this is facing the right way? We don't know because there's no real instructions. When it starts turning into a giant fan, <laughs> blowing all the sailboats across the quay, and you know something's gone wrong. I do have to say I'm an absolutely massive fan of wind turbines. Big fan. Number one fan. What would be sick is if you could do like baton twirling. But with with wind, yeah. <laughs> that would be completely cool. Right. Interesting little fact for you, a lot of the bolts that you get from China will always be 14 mil instead of 13 mil. And that's because of the superstition around the number 13. However, they don't actually believe in that number 13 superstition in China, but they just presume we do, so they don't send anything with a 13 size on it. I think now is as good a time as any to tell you about the long-term plan and goal that I've had for OI since the day I started it up, okay? People say, OI Electrical, what does that stand for? It's the Norwegian word for island. I started this company, at least the vision of this company, when I was in Norway and we were on an island outside of Ålesund. I think it's Haramsøya. But anyway, on this island, there are stacks of wind turbines, stacks of really awesome and interesting looking equipment. And I couldn't help but feel like that just looks so interesting. I want to work with all of that stuff. I'd love to go into off-grid engineering, island power with that Scandinavian quality. So therefore was born a electrical. Especially when it comes to wind, I feel that's something that's really on people's mind because everyone feels like wind turbine would be an awesome option them, for them. Because when the sun isn't shining, it's usually on stormy bad days. And on those stormy bad days, they tend to be the times where the wind is blowing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to share my data with you all. So I'm gonna have a public access VRM. If you have your own company or your own house and you wanna have it on there, you can just scroll through the data for the wind turbine and see how much we've actually produced to see if it's worth doing or not. Because, to be honest, it is a bit of an experiment. Alright, so what we need to do is get this wind turbine connected on. Now, the turbine is going to be three phase, but it just gives you these silly little connectors here, which, in my opinion, is a bit rubbish. So the best thing that I can think of doing, I've got my soldering iron. If we solder and heat shrink some connections on, that can run down to where he's just drilled out there. Yeah, it's coming. There we go. Got it. Okay, cool. And I can quite comfortably say this is the first wind turbine that I've ever soldered. Do you know if there's any kind of order that this needs to be in? No. Doesn't matter, no, I guess. doesn't matter at all. We need to strip these back and we're going to have to solder these together. In fact, I'm going to solder it. I'm going to do it a bit different. This is the Milwaukee soldering iron. Runs on the M12 batteries and I tell you, it is an absolute beast. I'm thinking going twist around each other like that, look and then heat shrink down. Yeah. So side by side. As long as it's gonna seal up enough on the end. Yeah. This would usually be an absolute sin in terms of cable connection. But what I think I'm gonna do 
is solder it on like that. So twist and solder. Well, I've managed to absolutely butcher that together. It is solid, like that is not snapping, but I can't help but feel like Oliver from Chile Electrical is not seeing this right now. He'll disown me and he won't want to be my friend anymore. But it's a solid connection. It's just the trouble is they're two different metals. So to get them to weld and be happy to stick together, a bit tricky. All right, let's see how that bonds together. This is awful to solder this stuff. Why is it not taking a solder? I hold it together with these. I think I was better off doing it how I was doing it. All right, this is really hard to do on a dock where everything is moving around to try and get a solid kind of need three hands. I think I'm gonna have to go for the twisting technique that I was doing before. I think that worked better. All right, this is ready to mount now. Do you have that Allen key there? We need that bolt through the middle as well. In fact, maybe I should put that bolt through first just to make sure it lines up. Do you know what? I seriously might stick one of these on my chimney at home. Why not? I don't know if you need planning permission when it's on a house. You don't. What about wild bird populations flying in some and things? What was the planning requirement for the turbine, Johnny? Two metres, wasn't it? Uh, you're allowed two and a half or three metres above your ridge line as long as the wind sweep area isn't something like four square metres, which works out at like 1800 mil diameter blade. But or in English, no, you don't need... No, you don't need it for a small turbine, no. Do you know what's convenient? They've actually got a store here where they sell cables, connectors, bolts, all that. Yeah, so I probably could get this bolt in there. This bolt that, that's supplied is just a touch too short. And I think it's because we've used a slightly heavier duty pole than what's necessarily needed. Because if that was to close that extra couple of mil, that would be enough to get a couple of turns on the thread. But what I'll do is I'll go see if I can find another one of these bolts and then we'll resume. All right, so we had an absolute result. They happen to stock the exact bolt I need at that little marine store there. And they even had my Amazon parcel. I had to order some new bits for my drone. So I don't know if you saw, on the part one, but my drone spontaneously deconstructed itself again, which means I had to buy a few bits <laughs> to repair it. I did a good job. It did a good job of breaking itself this time. Ah, oh, there we go. That bolt fits perfectly. One good thing about being an absolutely terrible drone pilot is it makes you really good at repairing them. I've broken this drone in every conceivable way you can imagine. And yet it always seems to come back one and more. Well, at least it comes back. It's fair play to DJI for making their stuff so repairable. They're always pretty straightforward to fix when you break them. I say this, I haven't actually test flown this since the last big crash. I'd stand back. Attitude mode. No way. Fly with caution. I mean, it's a bit shaky. Max altitude reach. I'd say it's not, not quite as stable as it used to be. <laughs> oh, poor thing. Max altitude reached. Oh, this is amazing. This is cinematic. Oh no, it doesn't work at all. Okay, well it looks like I need a new drone. You have to go there to find out. Landing. It's a lot scarier catching it when you don't trust it. All right, well, I guess you just have to imagine cinematic drone shots. Do we need to be careful that this is going to be generating as soon as it turns? I don't think it matters. Okay, because I'm just thinking about short. Oh, it's on a plug anyway. It's on a plug. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm just thinking about on. dangling that dangerous end. Yeah. Oh, well. Oh. This is actually a big thing. Okay, coming through. Oh, there goes our life ring. Oh, there we go. There's our turbine. Oh, already it's spinning. Yeah. Love to see it generating that sweet power. Oh, that is going and it's barely even a breeze. Oh, if that's not fixed on properly. Now this has all been painted up and everything, it looks awesome. This is just the top coat as well. Look at that. Looks wicked. We just need to tidy up all that cabling now and that's an absolute dream. I absolutely hate these ladders with a passion. I feel these ladders are an involuntary retirement on a stick. Time to tidy up all these cables now. I don't know if you can hear this, but that thing is absolutely going for it. This thing is going to generate roughly 500 watts, which is about the same as one of these solar panels. Solar panels can't do anything at night time. This thing will work 24 hours a day. And at night time, when they're using power, as long as the wind is blowing, which here, it pretty much is all the time. Like this is it now without 
really any wind and it's still spinning. I'm not gonna lie, this is a bit scary. I felt, should I just use that as a fireman's pole? Adam, can you guide my feet? Well, I'm on, but I'm on the sketchiest ladder of all time. Times five. Whew. Made it. All right, so we're ready to make the last connections now. Now, I wish I could pad this out into some really long, tasting, monetizable video. However, I can't, and I'm not about wasting your time. So what I'm gonna do instead is tell you a really long story at this pace so that I can make the eight minute mark to get some sweet moolah. No, I'm not gonna waste your time. So what we have is inside this plug here, we have the AC coming down from the wind turbine. That is 60 volts max. And then it goes through there into this charge controller and then out as DC. And then we are plugging into that DC here. That then goes into the Victron system via a shunt. And that's it, it's charging batteries. It is literally as simple as that. I mean, obviously I can't open that up to know for sure but you'll have your three phases coming in. So within the wind turbine, as you probably will know, you have your three phase. I believe it will be delta. When they actually enter into that device, you'll have them coming in to what is known as a bridge rectifier. So a three phase bridge rectifier looks something like that. And you're gonna have a series of diodes and you're gonna have your L1, for example, gone there, L2, L3. So it's gonna look something like that um, in order to generate your DC. It's times like this where you realize how smart a teacher is because to actually know something and then to know it well enough to teach it is a really different thing. I've actually made one of these before. This is it. There's my lovely drawing. Oh, there you go. Oh, <laughs> that wasn't far off. So there's your three phase bridge rectifier. In fact, I think this is different. Tell me why this is different. This symbol, if you can read it, is different to a normal diode. Um, and then that is it going through. So I was actually trying to make one myself. Look at that young, chubby little face sitting there desoldering boards. Learn this yourself, okay? So this is called a bridge rectifier. Go away and learn how that works because the thing is, I'm not really knowledgeable enough to be able to properly explain that to you right now other than this is a diode, this is the three phase coming in and then this is coming out as DC. Bush. Now that will be showing up on your VRM portal so that when you click the link, you can go track this whole install. You'll be able to see exactly what the solar is generating, exactly what state the charge of the batteries are at, and also exactly how much that wind turbine is generating. So you can make your own mind up on whether or not it's worth doing. So you're gonna have to ignore the wiring on the board here. The chap who bought the boat basically bought it pre-wired and pre-configured. So all of this is on the list to sort out and fix. This is the monitoring screen for the Serbo GX. So the sun has gone down now, so there's nothing coming in from the PV. And when I'm wiring the Vitron cable, you'll actually be able to see exactly what the wind turbine's generating as well. But you can see from today, the batteries, all 75 kilowatt hours of them, are charged to 98% and you'll be able to track exactly what's going through. Now the hope is, this has an open API. We've got someone at the minute working on the back end with Crestron and a couple of different smart home systems to see if we can pull that into some smart home apps so you can properly track it all from your phone and from when you're away without having to log into VRM. Well, it's been absolutely awesome. And I tell you what, this year coming, we have got some ridiculous projects planned and hopefully that translates into some ridiculous videos. So if you're interested in getting work from us, then ping me an email. If you're interested in watching more videos like this, then subscribe, like, comment, and it helps me be able to make more of them. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Mac 1010 used to be a load bank. We'll do that again.